Let me share to you a life of another Lebanese proclaimed saint named Father Nimatala Kasab Hardini. Father Nimatala lived a very holy life. He was a man of prayer, totally enraptured by God. He spent days and nights in meditation, prayer, and adoration of the Eucharist. The Virgin Mary was her his patron and father Nimatala prayed her rosary. He was also a very humble, sensitive, and patient person who lived his monastic vows of obedience, chastity, and poverty to perfection. His fellow brother monks and the people who knew him called him the saint. While he was still alive, one of his students was Sharbel Makhluk. Saint Charbel, eighteen fifty three to eight to fifteen fifty eight to eighteen fifty eight taken place through his interse intercession. This include the raising to life of a miss of a Muslim child whose mother claimed had died, the healing of the healing of a person with a neurological disease, the restoration of sight to a blind person in the curing of a person suffering from cancer. These are a few example, examples of Father Nimatala's astonishing miracles. Father Nimatala's life was a miracle in itself. However, the greatest miracles performed by Father Nimatala are the many people who have returned back to God because of his intercession and his way of life. This is especially so of many monks who realizing the full depth, depth and richness of Father Nimatala's example, have determined to walk on the same path of loyalty to their Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved. And I was astonished knowing that that St. Charbel, the well-known St. Saint Lebanon saint in Lebanon also is his student, really. Pasok tayo doon, no? Nimatala died in the monastery of Kipan on 14 December 1858. He died holding a picture of the Virgin Mary, his last words being, O oh, Virgin Mary, between your hands I submit my soul. Father Nimatala's death witnessed a heavenly light illuminating his room in an aromatic smell which remained in his room for a number of days afterwards. Monks opened Father Nimatala's tomb and to their surprise they found his body had remained in Korak. He was then removed and placed in a coffin near the church. After obtaining due permission from the local ecclesiastical authority from 1864, visitors were allowed to see Father Nimatala's intact body until 1927. Here, the Committee of Inquiry set up to investigate the cause of Father Nimatala finished its investigation. 
declared venerable on September 7, 1989 at the behest of his beatitude patriarchs Nostra Peter Spear. Spear, his body was examined and placed in a new coffin on May 18, 1996. His body was recently transferred to a new coffin made of cedar and placed in the monastery of Kipan where people may visit. body was reburied in the carving wall of the monastic cell, being transferred to a little chapel where masses are celebrated for visitors. Mm -hmm. It's happening now. <laughs>